All right, it's signing day live back here on Facebook Live. It's not Monday, it's Wednesday, but head coach Mike New joins us a little bit off our normal schedule. Big day for you guys, though. Uh, congratulations on the signing class you've had so far and a little bit of a change of pace from what National Signing Day is usually like. Uh, let's start there. What's it like having a class come in here and, and be part of the Bird Gang here in December? Yeah, absolutely. You went into today with a lot of anticipation, not really sure what would unfold. You know, I think we felt very good about all of our committed players. We expected all of them uh, to sign today. But, uh, you know, really just, you know, what's normal for signing day and then what today would actually be like. So it was exciting, though, for us. First thing this morning, you get up and uh, you race into the office at 6 o'clock in the morning and uh, stand, obviously, wait patiently to, uh, to hear from compliance and to he'll hear from, uh, you know, Tillman Clark about when we're good to go and release guys that officially have become part of our family. And there are two things that keep fax machines alive. One of them is me, <laughs> and the other one is National Signing Day. I still send faxes. I don't know what the deal is. Um, you can interact with us uh, during this broadcast here. Shoot us some questions or uh, comments for Head Coach Mike New. Uh, you can do that on Facebook on this post. We'll get them and then uh, can relay those to Coach. And then if you want to tweet me as well, I'll, I'll check my phone a little bit here as we go through the interview. And if you have any questions for Coach New, uh, you can hit me up and him up that way as well. Uh, 18 large right now signed and committed. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about this group before we get into specifics. Yep. Uh, this is a class that a little bit different than last year. Last year was really position heavy. Right. Uh, this year you've spread it around a little bit more. Uh, and certainly geographically, you've spread it around right. a little bit more. Nine different states are represented in the 18 you have right now. Ohio leads the way, four, Indiana behind that with three, so still fairly locally uh, centered, uh, but you, you spread it out and went down to Florida, went back to Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you put this group together? Well, I think, you know, obviously having such a big class a year ago, and now uh, once you start t attacking the 2018 class, you know, a year ago or even before that when we started to uh, target our guys we wanted to go after, you know, still you want to continue to get bigger. For us, getting bigger, becoming more athletic, and, and becoming versatile. And I think if you just look at this class right now, the 18 guys uh, that we have signed right now, uh, that's the thing that jumps out first and foremost is just the length, uh, the athleticism and the versatility because we got some guys that really uh, have position flexibility. We can have them a couple different positions and uh, their best position or their ultimate position uh, may not even be decided yet. Once we get them into the program, uh, they stop playing multiple sports. They get with our strength and conditioning staff. Uh, I think we're, the, you know, some of these guys uh, have such a bright future and haven't even begun the process yet of uh, starting to put on weight and starting to put on strength. So I'm excited just about the overall uh, versatility, uh, the length and athleticism. You can't get enough of that in your program. I have a couple of particular questions about that, so we'll get into that in a second. Let's check, uh, check the question lines here real quick before we dive into the specifics. And we had uh, one question that came in uh, before we started going. Um, Several guys uh, with good height and weight. So I guess that, that's one of the things that uh, you just talked about. Um, does it speak a little bit toward uh, what you want to see in the trenches, what you've seen in the trenches, and how you need to get better there? Well, for sure. I think, you know, we learned uh, a tough lesson this past season when we had some injuries, and certainly uh, you just want to try to continue to build as much depth and as much competition as you possibly can. And starting with the O line and D lines, getting guys with size that can play more than one position, having guys that can play tackle, can play guard, uh, can even play center. We got a couple young men that played all five positions uh, on the offensive line in high school. Flip that over to the defensive side of the ball. Now you got some big guys that can play tackle, that can play end. They can you you have position uh, you know versatility because as we know the season can take a toll and you got to be able to to have guys that when injuries start to present themselves man we got to have guys that can play more than one position sure let's get into the specifics of it uh, first and foremost we're going to start on the defensive side and we're going to start with the defensive line and in particular uh, we'll start on the end and you talk about getting bigger six foot four two hundred and sixty pounds a defensive end his name is Jack Sape he comes from Bloomfield Hills in Michigan. 23 sacks, a school record, the last two seasons alone. Tell me about young Jack Sape. Yeah, you know, right out of the gate here, you're talking about size, you're talking about length, you're talking about athleticism and a playmaker. You know, his sack production, obviously something you get very excited about. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's a guy that played multiple sports in high school, and so once you get him into your program, uh, you start to really focus on the strength and conditioning aspect of it. Uh, Jack's going to be a big guy, and, uh, you know, he's got a great background and that he's very competitive, and, uh, you know, I think we're excited in, in, you know, getting Jack in here and uh, where ultimately does he end up at? Does he end up at end? Does he end up in? Side. And so uh, just to, you know, right out of the gate, the position, versatility, athleticism, and length for a guy like Jack. One of two from his high school. We'll get to the second uh, when we get to the offensive side of the ball. We'll keep it on the defensive line. Uh, Kyron Mims, another guy. We talk about size. Six foot four, 
275 pounds. Coach Spizak always likes to talk about it. He goes, we need linemen that can, that can get up there. We need 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, we need some trees yeah. up front. Here's another guy that does that for you. Yeah, not only that, you need, you're talking about Jack and Kyron both. Man, it's, it's fun for me to be able to look guys in the eye when they come on a recruiting <laughs> trip and an official visit. I get excited about that. But then, oh, you also put in there that, you know, just Kyron's length, you know, getting his arm length to get blockers off of him to be able to, you know, make plays. He's disruptive and he spends a lot of time uh, you know, on the offensive backfield, which is what we love. And so, again, here's a guy from Louisiana, got a little bit of a nasty streak to him. It was a great get for us. And, you know, I think for him coming up here and, and really seeing firsthand what our university is all about, he felt great about the family environment. And, uh, you know, again, great addition for us because of, you know, just his size, length, and, you know, his ability to be disruptive is a welcome addition. I was going to say the New Orleans, Louisiana hometown. <laughs> is that a Johnny Curtis special for you or a Mike New special? There's a lot of Louisiana running through this coaching staff. Oh, certainly. Johnny's, uh, you our lead down in Louisiana, but it was fun for me to be able to go down there and uh, and go over to Kyron School. Obviously, I had some uh, history with his high school coach there during my time recruiting uh, in Louisiana. But uh, Kyron is a big boy uh, that we're excited uh, to welcome to uh, the Muncie community and to the Ball State family. Emika Jelani, also on that defensive line. I'm going to try this, and I have not run this in its entirety <laughs> by anybody. So, Emika, if you're watching, my sincerest apologies. His full name, Chukwameka Jelani Ogakwu. I think I'm close, but I'm probably wrong. Um, if, his, if he's as difficult to block as his name is to say, uh, he's 6'2", almost 300 pounds on the defensive line. Yeah, he's just starting to scratch the surface. You know, he's just a little bit uh, shorter than the other two young men we talked about, and Jack and Kyron, but you talk but about a guy is shorter. that is powerful. Yeah. He is powerful, and really, uh, you know, he's not been playing the game for very long, so uh, tremendous he's upside. Yes. I mean, he's and been so, in this for four years, right? Correct, correct, and so tremendous upside. Uh, a lot of raw talent, but came from a good – uh, his, his coach in high school did a great job of kind of getting him acclimated, teaching him the game. And, you know, that's a great thing about Emika, man. He loves the game. And uh, the one thing that shows certainly uh, when you get around him face to face is his passion for the game. And, uh, you know, what a tremendous upside he's got. He's a raw guy that uh, is powerful. Uh, got a wrestling background, too, which we always love uh, guys that are in the trenches that have a wrestling background because it's almost like uh, a wrestling match in the trenches. So it's going to be a great addition here with Emika. Is there something cool about, I mean, the diversity? Diversity in sports he's played. I mean, he, rugby guy, soccer guy. He swam at 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. I think Darnell Smith was a swimmer when he was yeah. before Ball State as well, uh, which always blows my mind when guys that size right. are that agile. Um, what does that diversity of off uh, of diversity of skill set bring to the table for him as it translates to football? Well, obviously he's had success in other sports besides football, and you love that. You know, to hear about a big athlete like that that you know is a swimmer, that he's a wrestler. Uh, you know, not played football for very long, but yet in the short time he has played football, he's excelled at a high level. Yeah. That's exciting. He's got big old size 17 feet. I'm not sure uh, that he's done growing yet. And so uh, it's going to be exciting <laughs> to have that because, you know, obviously when you get size, uh, that's certainly uh, very difficult for offensive linemen to block. And uh, when you get guys not only with size that can move the way these three young men can, that's exciting for us. Let's go to the linebacker level. Um, I love talking to Byron Ellis, uh, your chief of staff, because every time I mention this guy's name, he goes, grown man. Let's talk about the junior college transfer, Ray Wilborn. Uh, he is 6'4", 225 pounds, and from all accounts is apparently chiseled out of a block of marble. I'm telling you, uh, you know, <laughs> what fortunate for us, you know, this – the, the, the situation with Ray kind of happened late here uh, in the recruiting period, you know, as we got into November and December. And, uh, you know, what a great addition for us. You know, I, every day, I, you know, I was so excited to get uh, the paperwork in today on Ray, knowing that he was going to be joining us here starting mid-year and be on campus in January because, uh, you know, again, 6'4", 225 pounds to run the way he does, uh, to – the versatility that he has. He can, he can rush the passer. He can cover in space. And uh, he's got good speed. He's got a background also where he played wide receiver. Uh, and he can go up and get jump balls. And, uh, you know, let's face it, you know, that's, that's something I obviously get excited about too. But, uh, I mean, Ray is a great addition for us. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to get him in here because, uh, you know, I don't know if you could say you could get a better guy prototypically uh, with his size, with his length, with his athleticism. Uh, you know, in addition to his pass rush ability and being able to wreak havoc, uh, I'm excited uh, that Ray's part of our family. Yeah, TFL in 10 of 12 games he played this past year. Garden City Community College, uh, and he's from 
Central Michigan. He's from Lansing, Michigan, uh, so coming back closer to home yep. for Ray as well. Davion Tyson, also at the linebacker level. Tell me about Davion. Uh, he comes your way from Ohio. He's yep. one of those four Ohio kids in this class, 6'3", 220 pounds again, yep. size, height at that yep. second level. Yeah, you talk about guys that can rush the passer off the edge. He's athletic. He's a basketball player. Uh, you know, he's the one guy that when you get him in the program, he's got so many tools. Now we just got to develop him when we get him in here, get him in the weight room, get him with Coach Armour, Coach Fakes, uh, put weight on them right way. But uh, he's got everything you want when you just talk about the skill set for linebacker, being able to rush a passer, got good range to be able to cover in space. And so uh, it's exciting. You know, it's exciting to have another guy in there, you know, along those same mold of a Christian Albright. And, and uh, you know, Ray's obviously a little bit taller, but uh, it's exciting to be able to continue to add guys. Uh, at that position that uh, that present that skill set. Let's talk about defensive backs. Uh, not as many of them in this class. You had a ton last year, uh, but you, you supplement it well. You add three to this group. Um, let's talk about AJ. Um, AJ. AJ. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> his, his last name is Uzadinma. AJ Uzadinma II. That's a great job, yeah, by the way. Well, I'm doing my darndest. Uh, tell me what AJ brings to the table. Yeah, AJ obviously is out of Florida, but the first thing that you notice when you put on AJ's tape is he's a dynamic playmaker. He play, makes plays on both sides of the ball. He's an exceptional basketball player too, so his hand-eye coordination, his movement skills, and you talk about a guy with ball skills. Obviously when you're talking about corners that are six foot, um, you know, that's a big need for us. we got to create some more turnovers. Uh, feel good about the young men the, that are in our program currently, but adding a guy like AJ in addition to these other two young men at the defensive back position. Uh, we're just continuing to get guys that are uh, playmakers, that have ball skills, uh, and then have swagger, which it takes that at that position. And, uh, you know, love the athletic background of these three guys. You know, I want to seg in between two guys here because you've got A.J. who played wide receiver, 14 touchdowns in seven games this past year. D.T. Stevens is the next guy in this defensive back group, also a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. And, and you mentioned this off the top. How do you guys decide, and, and maybe you haven't, you kind of said that a little bit as well, um, where guys eventually will wind up and how they best fit at the college level? Well, I think when you go start to watch and you start to target guys in recruiting, and it's no different uh, when you're in the National Football League and you're recruiting guys or looking for guys at the college level, obviously you have to project more when you talk about high school to college. But, sure. you know, there's there's – having a six foot or six one defensive back that you see on tape those guys are very difficult to find so you got to think outside of the box that you're going to have a defensive back that perhaps played some at wide receiver maybe you played even some at the running back in high school but six foot six one receivers that can project a defensive back that's a big uh, you know obviously that's something that uh, you have to be open to and that was a big uh, part of it for us in, in the uh, recruiting phase here is making sure we find guys that have had pl have played uh, some on the defensive side of the ball. But, hey, it's okay that they're wide receivers and uh, they've got good ball skills, they're playmakers. We'll get them in here and teach them uh, and continue to work with them technique for, where they can make that transition full-time from playing wide receiver to defensive back. Let's talk about D.T. Stevens a little bit, though. He joins the cast of the Georgia Project yes. Season 2. Um, what, what does he bring to the table for you in the defensive backfield? Well, again, you're talking about very similar to A.J. that we just talked about. Here's a guy that's played on the offensive side of the ball in high school, excelled at it, also played defensive back. You see him have return production. He's an, a great basketball player, too, averages 18 points a game. So uh, you're talking about a, a, an exceptional athlete here who's dynamic and uh, getting him in here in the defensive backfield. And, you know, obviously a lot of times, too, a defensive back, when you played over there at wide receiver, you understand what the receiver's trying to do to you. You understand what route concepts they're trying to execute here. Sure. Uh, and having a guy that uh, can process that quickly, you like all three of these guys can. That's a big deal for us. Another guy in the defensive backfield, I love nicknames, Tyler Potts. He goes by Red. Uh, tell me about Red Potts and what he'll bring to the table. Yeah, you know, obviously we were aware of Red, you know, going into it, but he came to our, one of our camps last summer. Uh, and when he came out here on the field and anybody that stepped out there at wide receiver last summer, uh, he was ready to lock him down. He took that challenge on. You loved right away not only his confidence playing the defensive back position, but the swagger with which he played. And then, oh, by the way, he did pretty much lock everybody down uh, at the prospect camp when we had it. Obviously, uh, we offered him early on. He committed, track him all fall uh, with his high school tape and had a great year this year. He was uh, up against a lot of 
uh, team's top receivers, as you would expect, and he really uh, did a nice job of holding them in check uh, each one of those challenges that he was presented with. So uh, I'm excited. Those three guys, I just look at their, you know, not only their skill set, but their personalities, uh, their confidence level, and their belief that they're going to come in here and make a big difference. All right, that's the defensive side of the ball. Uh, I am listening to you. I'm going to check the questions oh, here yeah. as we go on to the offensive side as well. Um, but let's talk about quarterbacks. There are two of them in this class, uh, so you add a little bit of depth to that position right now. Let's talk about the freshman first and foremost. John Paddock comes your way. We mentioned there are two guys from Bloomfield Hills in Michigan. John Paddock comes down south a little bit. Uh, talk to me about what he brings to the table for you. Six-foot guy, 185 pounds, but can really sling it, winning his quarterback in his high school's history. What caught your eye? Uh, the biggest thing about John Paddock is the it factor. You just talk about the intangibles that it takes uh, to play the quarterback position, the confidence level for a six-foot guy. You know, what he did this year, uh, week in, week out, you know, the way he played at a high level. We also had an opportunity to be around him at the prospect camp uh, last summer and just uh, his intelligence level, how quickly he could pick things up on the practice field. And I, I measure a lot with a quarterback is when you're in a workout setting like that at a prospect camp and you're forced to take on a new cast of characters at wide receiver, how quickly can you get on the same page? And I thought it was remarkable uh, how quick John learned the guys around him in a workout setting like that and how he executed uh, at a high level. And, and then when you see his tape and the come from behind victories that he had in the fourth quarter uh, for his high school program, I, I love the makeup of John. I love the attitude and more, most importantly, his accuracy, uh, being able to locate the ball consistently uh, to give your playmakers a chance uh, to, to make the play on the ball. That's, that's big. And uh, I th those are things that are certainly uh, in John's favor. We talked about it a little bit back at the end of the season. You and I had the conversation about playing quarterback when you make those level jumps is so much between the ears and how much can you understand and relay when you talk about working with new cast of receivers and understanding an offense that can be a major selling point. There's no question. I think that's the one thing that jumps out right away too with a guy like John is, you know, when he came to that workout and you saw how quickly that he adjusted to anybody around him, he took control of the workout, he took control of the one-on-one -on -one setting uh, during that camp. And so that was a big deal. And that started uh, the evaluation piece to solidify that, oh yeah, he is uh, certainly a guy that uh, could compete at this level and, and, uh, and be very successful at this level. So I know he's embracing and looking forward to the challenge uh, of competing, knowing that, uh, you know, obviously uh, we got a guy like Riley Neal in here and obviously uh, Drew Plitt that played some ball for us this year, but I know John's embracing that challenge. Uh, let's talk about uh, guys that could make an immediate impact. And obviously you mentioned, you know, there's some guys in front of John, in particular at the quarterback spot, uh, but Donnie Wilkinson's asking us. Um, there were a lot of freshmen that played last year yeah. for, for, better, for better or worse sure. in certain situations. Some of them forced into duty, uh, but a lot of them showed out really well. Uh, are there guys in this group that we've talked about already or that we haven't talked about yet, or maybe it's just a positional thing? How do you eye this group as people that can come in and in 2018 make an immediate impact? Well, going back to the defensive side of the ball, since we kind of finished talking about those guys, I look at Ray Wilborn. I think about, obviously, he's a junior college, so he's a little bit ahead of those guys in terms of maturity. But coming in here, uh, being able to get in here in January, I think we've got high expectations for a guy like Ray with his position, flexibility, his length, his athleticism. I expect him uh, to be on the field for us. And then you talk about the guys uh, in the defensive backfield. You know, obviously, a guy can come in, defensive backfield, if you can cover, uh, if you can make plays on the ball, then certainly uh, you're going to have a great opportunity to showcase your skill set, get into the mix in training camp. So I think you could see one of you know those three guys that are coming in in the secondary. Uh, somebody of that group is going to surface here in training camp and, uh, and end up being on the field in some capacity. I think it's hard you know, for the, the guys in the trenches. We'll see. Uh, you know, Once they get to camp, I think you learn a lot about those guys. Can they handle the transition from playing in the trenches in high school to playing in the trenches in college? So uh, that'll be a big deal with those guys uh, once they get in here. We'll get back to the trenches in a second because there are four offensive linemen in this group, but I don't want to leave out the second quarterback. And that's a guy who's an interesting story because he takes a little bit of a different path. Hank Hughes is a transfer from Texas A&M. He is in this recruiting class. Uh, he never signed a letter of intent before. He was an unrecruited walk-on at Texas A&M. Plays in the SEC for two years but never sees a snap, so he will be immediately eligible Correct. for you come next fall. Tell me a little bit about Hank Hughes, how he comes on your radar, why you like him. Yeah, you know, I did not, not know, uh, you know, obviously wasn't here yet at Ball State when he came out of high school and, and ended up walking on at Texas A&M. He had several offers from uh, some FCS Max programs, too, yeah. Max schools, correct. Uh, so obviously when I had a chance to take a look at his practice tape from Texas A&M, knowing that all he wanted was an opportunity, yes, things started to check off that he can come in here mid-year. Yes, he is eligible to play uh, right away. He's a dual threat guy, which I obviously am excited about that piece 
piece of it. And, uh, you know, Hank's uh, tape was very impressive when I had a chance to watch, uh, you know, a lot of Texas A&M practice tape, knowing, uh, you know, what he was being asked to do there and obviously excited about uh, just a little bit different fit and having a different guy uh, in the quarterback room with what he possesses skill set wise. I'm excited. I'm excited that he's able to get here in January. And uh, again, he's embracing the competition with Riley. He's embracing the competition with Drew Plitt, uh, knowing that we're also bringing in a uh, high school quarterback that's committed. So uh, I love the way he's going about his business here. And uh, I'm excited about Hank and the time I've been around him here just from a mental standpoint and what he can handle. One brother played at SMU, another one played baseball at the Air Force Academy. So that's a little bit of Hank Hughes's background. Let's go to the offensive line, though, uh, because let's talk about playing in the trenches. Uh, we, we, it can be difficult. Curtis Blackwell did it this past yeah. year as a true freshman. Um, this gives you some depth, though, on the offensive line when you add this group of guys. Joseph Boggs, first and foremost. Uh, let's start with him and what he adds to the table. Yeah, again, we're, I'm going to say the same thing with all four of these guys, but starting with Joseph, just the size, the length, the athleticism, the position versatility. Joe Boggs can play anywhere. Joe Boggs can play any tackles, either tackle spot. He can Kyle play loves guard. That. And Kyle loves that. You know, obviously his athleticism, uh, when you show him on tape, his, his feet, that's the thing you see how quickly he gets out of his stance, how quickly he kick slides in pass protection. Uh, that's exciting about Joe. And, again, uh, got a good background, very intelligent guy, uh, great academically, you know, getting him into our program. And, again, never would have thought, you know, seeing how quickly things tran transpired for a guy like Curtis Blackwell. Yeah. I'll never say never again, <laughs> uh, but certainly with, the, with Joe Boggs and, and the rest of the guys in this group I'm going to talk about. Just, just love the versatility and, and him being able to line up because uh, we know how injuries uh, you know, affected us this year, and obviously we want to prevent that from happening. Jalen Turner for you. He comes in already a 300-pound guy from Arsenal Tech, which a little bit of a difference in age, but I'm assuming at some point in time he blocked for James Gilbert. Yeah. So a little bit of a relationship there. Um, what's he bring to the table for yeah. you? Again, here's a guy that's powerful, man, for a guy coming in. Uh, went, he's from Indianapolis, but powerful guy that's got great athleticism. Uh, you can move him around. He can play either guard spot, which is where he's going to start for us initially, but you, know, you could also see Jalen being a guy that could end up playing at tackle because of how athletic he is, how good his feet are, and so I'm excited just about he's got tremendous upside, uh, a strong guy, got a great personality, always got a great smile on his face, and uh, got good football intelligence. So uh, going to be a great addition to our room. Luke Martin, uh, not to be confused with the guy that used to interview you at halftime. <laughs> uh, this one is younger and, and larger because he plays on the offensive line. Uh, he's from Fishers, short drive up 69, uh, nearly 300 pounds as well coming out of high school. What does Luke Martin give you guys? Yeah, again, Luke played all five positions on the offensive line while he was in high school. Very smart smart guy. Um played at such a high level, comes from a great high school football program at Fishers. Um, you know, I think for Luke, really he can play anywhere we need him to be, whether it's center, whether it's guard, whether it's tackle. Uh, and just like the other guys I've talked about in this group, man, the position, uh, flexibility, and, uh, you know, being able to line up at any spot, being able to make the calls, which is tough. That's a big adjustment from high school to college for most guys. Yeah. But, you know, Luke's one of those guys that directed traffic uh, for the offensive line in high school and being able to just the intelligence level of a guy like Luke and uh, uh, getting him in here. And, and obviously, again, we'll see, you know, playing in the trenches in college is different than high school, but uh, <laughs> I'll never say never again. Um, finally, Thomas Lopez. We talked about grown men. Yes. Thomas Lopez, junior college guy for you, uh, big guy. Uh, he comes in out of ASA, 6'5", 300 pounds. Guy who, as a junior college yes. guy, would be, I would think, in that mix to make an impact. No question. Thomas Lopez is a guy that has... Great experience, very mature. Yes, we won't, we won't be able to get him in here in January. He won't get in until the spring, uh, but he's a guy that's played uh, high-level football. Uh, he's physical. Uh, he's passionate about the game. He's a great finisher. Uh, he, too, has position flexibility, seeing him be able to play either guard spot, seeing, uh, seeing him being able to play tackle uh, if we need him to. And uh, I'm excited because of the maturity level, because of the experience, because, you know, having some young guys in the program, it's great to have a guy like Thomas come in who's, who's a little bit more seasoned, who's sure. been around, who's seen a lot. Uh, and I think that's going to be a welcome addition to that group. We've got a question about wide receiver, but before we get to receiver, uh, we got a couple guys that are, are kind of in between. They're not offensive linemen. They're not wide receivers. Uh, the tight end position for you, Caleb Murray. Let's start there because here's a guy uh, who's a really recent commit. He just uh, committed to you and then signed just a couple of days later. Uh, he is a high school offensive tackle, and I looked at his numbers immediately, and I go, 
well, that guy's either not going to play as a freshman or he's going to go and be an enormous tight end. Uh, this is another Coach Spizak favorite. He, he loves like 6'6", 260-pound tight ends, and that is Caleb Murray. Yes. This guy gives you a different kind of weapon on the edge of that line, doesn't he? There's no question about it. Caleb Murray is a unique situation here because we were fortunate uh, to be able to find him and to get into the mix for Caleb. He hurt. He, he had an ACL injury uh, back in the summer where he missed the, majority, missed the majority of his senior year, came back, played the final three games, and that was an ACL injury that happened in June. So that tells you about his toughness. That tells you about how resilient uh, of a young man that he is. And so like he's what, a five, big guy. Five months? If five I, months, yeah. which is hard to believe. Yeah. And he played good football the last three games when he was coming off that obviously serious of an injury. So I think Caleb's one of those guys. Obviously, we have him slotted at tight end right now. And, you know, who knows? You know, you want to get him into your program. You just love the size at 6'6". Six, six. You throw on he's weight, maybe he's pounds tackle, right yeah. now. Does he eventually become a tackle? I think that's a little bit of an unknown right now. But love his athleticism. Love the way he runs. Uh, you know, and he's a, a unique guy because of the injury that he faced. But uh, got tremendous upside. Very tough. Comes from a great high school program where he won two state championships. So uh, very excited just about the future for him and how uh, that ends up unfolding once he gets here on campus. The other tight end, Wes Obermeyer. I have seen video of this guy on Twitter. Uh, the man is a Mack truck. He is six foot six, two hundred and thirty five pounds, and he runs people over and at that size is a really good pass catcher for you as well. Why is he special and how does he factor in? Well, again, you're talking about another six foot six tight end that uh, is an exceptional basketball player. I had a chance to see West play basketball. He scored 26 points and had 12 rebounds, uh, and he knows his game. He yeah. wasn't outside just firing up threes. He's <laughs> down in the paint, banging people around, uh, scoring points, and he had a good, uh, good stroke at the free <laughs> make throw sure line. Make sure you keep Coach Whitford away from him. That's exactly leader. right. And we won't talk, but <laughs> but West is one of those guys when you turn on the high school tape at that size. He's playing outside more of a receiver role, and so uh, it's exciting. You know, to have him come in here and the versatility that he uh, brings to the table at tight end and, uh, you know, just excited about his upside, his future, and uh, I think you can see us move him all over the place. 16 down, two still to go. All right, let's talk about wide receivers. Uh, we have a question about who could be that next breakout name to know at the receiver position. Uh, well, on face value, this is the breakout name to know because uh, he wins name of the class. Johannes Tyler is a new member of the Ball State Football Cardinals. Tell me about Johannes. Man, he comes from a competitive environment <laughs> down there in high school football in New Orleans. And, you know, the first thing that's going to jump out at you is how big he is. His size. 6'4". His, his high, size, his length. Uh, and he hasn't even started to fill out yet. Oh, great. So yeah. you see him when you put on the tape, the number of contested catches, the catching radius that he possesses. I haven't seen him not come ball with a down, a, not come down with a ball when he goes up in traffic and does a good job of catching it at his highest point. And you can imagine when you're all of six four as Joe Hines is and being able to go up in traffic and extend. There's not too many guys that can go up and defend that. So I'm excited about what he brings to the table that way. He's a great addition to our receiver group. And we have a guy like Justin Hall. You have a guy like Khalil Newton. we got some young guys that are just starting to scratch the surface. But having a guy like Yo Hines, it's all of 6'4", and uh, really just scratching the surface can be a great addition to that group. One running back in this class as well. Before I ask you about Ty Evans, did you meet his father? I, I have not met his father. That'd be like my he's first a legend. thing. Yeah, he's a legend in WWE. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. His father is Michael Tarver, uh, stage name, the former member of the WWE Nexus, which took pro wrestling by storm. One of us knows these things because this is all I do on my Monday nights. <laughs> so, like, I got super excited when, when Mike Clark told me that uh, Ty Evans was coming uh, to be a member of Ball State. Um, but tell me about Ty because... I mean, like father, like son, the dude's a truck. He's, what, six feet, 230 pounds. pounds. He's bigger than Caleb Huntley. Yes. Uh, what does Ty Evans do for you? He's a rare guy because when you're talking about being six foot at 230 pounds, you're immediately going to be labeled as a guy that must be a pounder between the tackles. He must be a runner only. He's his but own lightning to his thunder? Yes. <laughs> when, you, when you put on the tape of Ty Evans, you see Ty at wide receiver. Not only do you see him at wide receiver, you see him catching it and outrunning people. So I think just what he brings to the table, Table. He's different than what we have there. You know, you got James, you got Caleb, you got Malik, you got Marquise. He's different. He's it's hard different to be different in a group have. of like in six. In a group like that, that's which the, is amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. Which is amazing. So it's exciting to have a guy like Ty Evans, to, the skill set that he brings to the table, the toughness, uh, the seeing him break tackles on tape. He has great speed. I mean, he's he's exciting because he is different, which is hard to believe, uh, than what we have out there. He's got he's a guy that can do damage out of the backfield. He's got a, a guy that when you put him outside, he catches the ball very well. Uh, he's going to be a factor in the return game. He's going to be a factor on special teams. So uh, exciting addition for us and an already very strong group.
and he's not afraid to take on John Cena. Um, that's 18 for you guys, though. This is not done, though. This is the early signing period. Right. It's the change to the rules this year. Uh, what work is still left to be done for you guys between now and the old signing day, which still remains in February? Right, and of course now it's a dead period after this signing period. Uh, this signing period is over on Friday. It's a it, it's a dead period until after the coaches convention. So you got a chance to take a step back. Uh, you still have you know a couple of needs or a couple of scholarships available. So I think it's kind of exciting because you have the month of January and uh, the early part of February now where you can go on the road again. Uh, you can certainly attack and make some some even. Uh, you know, another one or two additions uh, to an already great class for us. And so it's exciting. You know, I think uh, not with, with not really knowing for sure what this early signing period would hold. Uh, I'm very excited here now about the month of January and uh, what we could add uh, as the finishing touches to a great class. Did you like how the rule change worked out and how everything changes now in recruiting? Yeah, I mean, obviously I welcomed it and without not for sure knowing uh, how things would unfold. But I really uh, enjoyed it because you, you know, some of these young men have been committed to us for a little while. And uh, obviously you feel like, OK, we're at the ultimate. Now, are you going to? Is the paperwork going to be executed? Are you signing on the dotted line? So I think I think it's good for that because if they, these truly uh, players are committed to your program, uh, you're going to find out during the early signing period. It shortens the walk down the aisle. Just <laughs> takes you to a much That's smaller exactly church. Right. Um, Mike, congratulations on the uh, the signing class so far. Best of luck uh, rounding it out. We know there'll be a, a lot more. Uh, to add in a lot of excitement as we head toward uh, the spring and then uh, into to summer and fall. It is a never-ending cycle of uh, college football nowadays. Uh, but thanks for stopping by and congrats yeah. on the group again. Thank you. It's exciting, obviously, ready to, get, uh, ready to get to work, and it's exciting having this great class. Mike New joining us here, Facebook Live for Signing Day 2018, I think, Part 1, <laughs> 17, 18. If you missed any of this conversation, it will be archived here on Facebook and on BallStateSports.com, so you can check it out there. And we'll see you back here again next time on Facebook Live and Ball State All Access.